I'm Nick Riccato. I'm Riccato Law, a small law firm in Central Minnesota. I'm a lawyer and a legal political commentator here on YouTube. You already know this because you're watching the show. But if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the notification so you don't miss any future videos about legal news and political happenings. All right. And let me know what you think down in the comments below. Is Mark Elias a giant shyster or is he just a little bit of a shyster? Look, he's a lawyer, so you know that that answer falls somewhere on that spectrum. All right. Thank you for watching. Catch you next time. Peace. Peace. It's funny hearing one lawyer call all other lawyers a bit of a shyster. Because <laughs> that is true. How's everybody doing? Finish up that little thing. If you would listen. Okay, so we're going to redo these shocks. I need to add limiters. And redo the fluid in them. A little bit more. I mean, I do mean a little bit more of this one piece of tube. Let's see where I've got it. A lot of people, and myself included, use fuel tubing for your limiters and your shocks. There's a few other things you could use. I've got some plastic tube that kind of like aileron tube that you would shove your aileron rods through. I've got this old sad piece of tube, but I don't think I want to use that. I think I got enough there to do what I need to do. And I might be able to use some of that. I don't know if this stuff will work. It might not be large enough, but I think that shaft will slide through there. I can use that inside and make a little hard limiter. Good morning. <laughs> yeah, shock duty. Last set. Finally got the uh, redshift ones done the other day. Now I got to get these ones for the tarp rig finished up. I got another video where I went through them doing a kind of a how to build cheap Chinese shocks and make them work. These things, they've been built for about a month and a half, maybe two months now. No leaks. These are just cheap knockoff Chinese shocks. I'm a little full on fluid right now, but they uh, work pretty good. No leaks. You know, you can... A little bit of work in these Chinese shocks actually end up being pretty uh, decent. So I was kind of surprised. I didn't want to blow a bunch of money like, like I haven't already on this thing. But I figured, well, let me try these Chinese shocks to save a little penny. And if I can't make them work, I can't. But if I can, well, it's a few pennies saved. And they actually turned out to be pretty decent. So, yeah, not a bad deal. They're, I think, 10, 11 bucks a pair. Knock off from, I think I got them off eBay. Picked up some 90 millimeters and 100 millimeters at first for the front and rear. Um, 90s for the front, 100s for the rear. But the 90 millimeter shocks are actually 112 scale. Couldn't even get an M3 bolt through the, the mount pieces. So I ended up picking up to 110 millimeters. And if you're looking, you probably could have just got 100 millimeters all the way around. No use in buying the 110 millimeters. Um, they're a little more than than uh, what's needed. So no biggie. Um, but FYI, if you're looking to buy shocks, you can buy 100 millimeters on your note for your note prep rig. Because you're going to limit the max up pretty decently. And that's what I'll end up doing with these. Probably put about 10 millimeters in there. Yeah, this is a little bit sharper. And let's see, I guess let's start with the fronts. I gotta figure out what oil I've got in here because I don't know. 
Yeah, that's what most people are doing, just buying the, the slash fronts um, and doing them. Um, I had stock traction shocks and with a little bit of work, they work out well, but wanted to, you know, add some nice color and look. And so let's see what we're looking at. This is clear. So the question is, did I put 80 in these? I think that's what I did. Just put 80 in the fronts. That's probably actually not bad in the front. So I'll stick with 80 in the front. When I did the red shift shocks the other day, I had to figure out which oils I put in. I mean, luckily, I got these Team Losi oils, which are, at least in the higher weights, are colored. But then I've got a bunch of Losi half weights, which are all clear. I'm trying to remember which I use. I'm pretty positive on these. I used all the thicker stuffs. So let me try it this way. Yeah, it feels right. Yeah, it feels close enough. Yeah, I thought about the atomics because um, I've got atomic. Um, oh. It's not, <laughs> not the eighty. It's seventy because it's green. A little bit won't be in there. I got. Sometimes it's hard to watch. See what you're doing. All right, seventy would be fine in front too. But yeah, when I was doing the. The red shifts. Yeah, 110 millimeters, I think, are like almost four inch. 100 millimeters um, are, you know, like three and a half. Not much of the, the imperial or the metric measurement guys. I use the imperials myself. But yeah, I had. Uh, different oils in there it took me a minute to figure out which is which just gonna empty these back in there i've used a little bit of the 70 and a few things but yeah i ended up having 60 i think 60 weight in the fronts and i think i only had 50 in the rear and when I redid them, I went ahead and stuck 100 in the rears. And that's probably what I'll use when this 100s or 90s. I got 80 weight in the 13.5 build. And then 100 in the red shift, the street eliminator, 13.5 being obviously the street stock. And then... Uh, The hundred in the rear cell. One of the biggest things, I don't know if you're sure of this, Eric, or anybody else who's watching, Green Slime, I think this is from Team Losi Racing, or Factory Team, you know, Factory Team, so it might be Team Associated, but there's a little bit of Green Slime, a little tube, this thing will go through hundreds of shocks, but that is the best shaft in O ring lubrication. I use a little bit um, just around the cap on your uh, bumpers as well. Your diaphragms under your shot caps, little plastic rubbers, helps keep them lubed up real well. Things don't stick when you tighten your caps. Less chance of ripping, all that fun stuff. But yeah, I thought about getting the hundreds all the way around. And they got pissed out. I'll get 110s if they don't work. Then I could just sell them as a set for a slash bandit. You know, 100, 110 work. They didn't work that great for no prep. I just turn around and resell them already built for somebody. But they actually, I think they're gonna work out all right. I haven't had a chance to run. Obviously, we're hell barely made 45 degrees today. And I'm gonna have to pull these 
off. All right. Pulling in Eric's file. Well, sparking tree frog, really. These puppies of bark. Using hundred weight all the way around. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people using some various stuff. Um, you know, usually a little heavier in the rears and the fronts. Um, I've even seen a few people posting up to run like one thousand, two thousand weight diff oil in the rear shots. Come on. Um, really stiffening up those rears so they're just barely moving under the loads. Um, it's almost off. Okay, I shouldn't have to take those out. Yeah, it's just baby down. And up. Maybe I did put limiters on or anything. There. No, I guess not. No limiters. I didn't think I did. Did I? No, I didn't. All right. He's cleaned up oh, just a little bit. I really don't need to go much. I seen those. Yeah, the drag race concept spacers. They look like a nice little set. Pro line makes a set of shock spacers. I think it is too. Um, I almost bought those. I've been using fuel tube forever, so it's had some on hand still. Not much, but some. So I figured I ah, will use that. But yeah, those hard, hard for spacers. If you know, you ain't got any tubing that you could use or fuel line. You know, yeah, pick up those hard spacers. They're kind of nice. I see it and like say I thought about picking up the set, but I'm like, yeah, I got fuel tubing around and a few other things I could use. So I already spent way too much on everything else on this rig. <laughs> Try to save money at least on one part of it. All right, let's see. So on the front, I've been doing about a quarter inch, and that seems to work pretty well. Um, with the other three builds, peel a little bit of snow on the side. Bring her up here and take a quick peek. So, oh, I got those screws backed out right there. So, yeah, I think if I just stick with a quarter inch. I will be pretty good to go. Sorry, I'm cutting off. Her. So I think I'll do a quarter inch on the front again. That seems to be a pretty good amount of limitation stopping them from getting up too far. Just a little lower than level. Let's see how this works. This may not work too well because this shot check may be a little big. Yeah. Plastic's not going to work. Not big enough diameter. I used a little bit of this stuff on the. I got a set of 90 millimeters, like I said, um, of the red ones for the red shift. 
90 and hundreds, and then I bought a let's say the hundred and tens for the rear. Um, I used the 90s actually on the uh, wheelie bar, um, as wheelie bar dampers. And this stuff was able to go around those. Whoop, you don't want that. This stuff was able to go around those 12th scale uh, track shafts pretty easily. Give myself a clean side to cut from. Probably have enough off this to cut my two backs. So let's see. Nope, we got just enough to cut her in half, I think. Okay, I cut, let's see what we got here. See where we're at length. We have just over five eighths. So yeah, three eighths side. That would be about right, a little bit more than three eighths. Okay. Put that in half right there. It'll give me just enough to do the backs. A little over a quarter inch. Basically about what, three twenty-four, something like that. Yeah, yeah, it is only money. <laughs> But I do have a remodel that I need to get into. I got a whole bathroom I need to redo. Starting out with the floor, I got a leaky washer, so I got some bad floor I got to replace. And then getting old and won't be taking many tub baths anymore. So I'm going to take the tub out, put a stand up shower in, and gently remodel the whole thing. Probably go ceramic floor and under tile, you know, floor to tile um, heating and spoil it that way a little bit make my feet a little happier in my older age okay gently work this through so i don't rip up the o-rings and threads and these on this side so for those watching that don't know, these little pieces I'm slipping on here, they're a limiter. And obviously underneath the piston, they're going to limit the travel of the shock shaft outside of the shock body, how much is extended. And by doing so, you can set ride height and shock travel, you know, actual length of the, the shock is going to travel on you. And when these are done, well, that may be almost too much. I think I am going to try to go ahead and cut this one in half. That quarter inch might be a little too much. So I'm going to. Thin it down a little bit. That's so 
take a smidge off that. Kind of hard to cut this. Be able to if you want to saw silicone snot eat up. Okay, couple of bumps. The bits of orange didn't rip any o rings. All right, for drink. Now I had 70 in there, and I think I'll go back to 70. It should be good. <laughs> but yeah, they're you can, you can see they're a little less out, not much. Any of the noobs out there looking or people who've never done shocks before this no prep thing has been killer, man, as far as bringing, you know, new RCers into the hobby or new people into the RC hobby, probably a better way of putting it. This thing really blowing up. Really blowing up. I'm talking to people who either have been out of RC for a while or never into it. What about this? What about that? God, that's so cool. Been watching some YouTube vids of vids of actual one-to-one -one drag racers, uh, mostly for setup tips and tricks and what they're working in real life. Um, and you know, they talked to a couple of those guys from their channels and. So like, oh man, that's kind of cool, man. I have to get one of those. So yeah, it's got to draw even into the one-to-one -one world. Of course, a lot of us seen that happening. All right, it's not bad. Let these set. I don't have a shark tower, so I've got a. Pipe holder when you're flanging pipe. I use those to hold my shocks until they're done bleeding or bubbling out, I should say. All right, this one Ooh, squirt. Not some of those bubbles. All right, I'm going to set this down and take a quick two second run. Okay, two minute run.
All right. Yeah, flying off, it can't keep them in stock, man. I ordered uh, the Revolution RC slipper clutches about a month ago, three weeks or a month ago, from A Main. They had been out of stock for about a month. I said, okay, I'll order them and get them on stock. So, they're, you know, when they get their next order, they'll come in. Next order came in last week. And it was in and showed in stock for like three days. And it was out of stock. And my order is still pending. So, all the stuff they got had already been ordered of the Revolution RC uh, slipper systems. So... People had already ordered before I got there. I seen somebody on Facebook um, the other day posted that um, reactions were available on Amazon. And they're coming right out of Proline or no, I'm sorry, Horizon Hobby. Um, right out of Horizon Hobby on uh, Amazon. And I went, the guy said there was 11 pairs left when he bought his. There was like 11 left. When I went there, there were six left, and when I went back an hour later, they are gone. So, yeah, this stuff is flying off the shelf just crazy fast. Let me get a little light on the situation so I can see it a bit better. Okay, now for those of you that don't know, never done shocks before, you want to get all the bubbles out. When you first fill them up and you see me moving the, the shaft and heard a little <laughs> sounding, it's because I was getting the air out from underneath the piston. You got to take your shaft and move it a little bit up and down to get that air bubble, air out from underneath the piston, get the fluid underneath it. And then you need to let them set. And that's where we're at now is to hurry up and let them set because it takes a while. The thicker the oil, obviously, the slower the bubbles move. And I can see there's a ton of little bubbles in there. So this is the fiddly part of doing shocks is getting them all your bubbles out to bleed all the air out of them. And same thing on this one. I can see quite a few bubbles in there so it's going to take these a few to set and i probably have to come up with something else to hang the other rears in so they can bubble up i tend to try to set them down and then let them set at least 45 minutes to an hour the heavier the oil the longer i let it set and with silicone oil it doesn't do much good to kind of heat the oil to get it loose because maybe you get it hot enough to actually make it a little more viscous so the bubbles rise, you're kind of breaking down the oil. So you just kind of got to wait it out. Well, there really ain't much other way to doing it. So we'll set this aside because I'll have to top them off and we'll move on to the rears. We'll go ahead and get these off. Well, that light whitewashes the hell out of this thing, don't it, on screen? <laughs> oh, walked into heaven, everything's just lit up. Gone. There we go. So, yeah, I'm still waiting for uh, slipper clutches before I can even run. Unless I buy um, just the stock uh, DR10 slippers. I've got the, I'd have to get pads too because the pads I have are for the ETS um, sit ups. All right, get this one off. Then I guess it'd be a good time to take a short little break on video. Oh, that sucker's tight. 
That one I moved. Oh. That sucker hard. You always gotta watch when you're grabbing your shaft. Cause that stuff will those little cuts and scrapes on the shaft will mess up your O-rings and then you'll be leaking and then you need new shafts. And I'm not sure you can buy a new just shafts for these cheap ass things. I'm gonna have to buy a some tracks of shafts and a few others just to see what will work in them for replacements. Because usually what I've found of these Chinese shocks is they're pretty much one and done. You can't buy parts for them. <laughs> yeah. It's like you're walking into the pearly gates. It's all lit up. <laughs> Waiting for the, the heaven, heaven bells that are chiming. <laughs> Because it is uh, pretty bright, no doubt. <laughs> All right, let's take a peek at what we got in here for oil, I guess, first. It's a little piece of rubber top. Red. And the red is the 50. Yeah, it's red, not orange. All right. Yeah, so I got 50 weight and 70 weight in this one. And that's too light in the rear from everything I'm seeing. So, yeah, absolutely. I've seen the hot racing ones, um, Exotech. When I first had my setups um, last fall, I went ahead and bought an Exotech. But since now I've switched over to the drag race concept trannies with the team associated slipper shaft or top sh top shaft with the team associated slipper clutch, I should say. Um, I'm moving over to the basically team associated stuff for the you know with the VTS. So we'll see how that one ends up. Let's see. Let me put these ones. Don't matter much, but we'll go ahead and keep them kind of by where they belong. But yeah, I'll probably buy a slipper eliminator now for the for this one because, like I say, I had one of the Exotex for the tracks and stuff. I sold it to one of my local buddies because um, he's still running Traxxas trainings, and I'll probably pick up one of the Exotex or the hot racing one for the. Uh, Team associated stuff now. Probably Exotech because I'm using most of this. The only thing I've got from Hot Racing so far on the tarp, no, on the tarp, on the Redshift, I put a, nope, that wasn't Hot Racing either. It was STRC. So yeah, the only thing I got Hot Racing are the diff cups, um, the aluminum diff cups, and then the aluminum idler gears in the trainings. Everything else I got. Is like STRC atomic um, parts and pieces. All right, go ahead and pop these puppies out. Give them a quick clean because I am going to change your oil in here and go to a 90 weight. I think I got 80 and 90 and 80 and 100 in them right now. So I think I'll try 90 weight just to have a little variance. And see how that seems to do. One of the rubber shaft, or I'm sorry, the, the cap diaphragm. Alright, Eric, you have a good night, man. Take her easy. Yeah, kind of late here, but 
I'm in that insomnia moment, so I won't be sleeping for about a week very much. <laughs> but you take care, man. Have a good one, and, you know, lids up, tires down. <laughs> All right. Good enough for what it's for. Interesting. A little bit of schmutz on the top of this piston, like it didn't quite get cleaned off from the mold. Stuff off, yeah. Okay. Wash my hand or break. Get all this fluid off me. Okay. Try to straighten this out just a little bit. Sometimes the tough part about cutting fuel hose is cutting it flat, getting a nice flat cut because it compresses and then gives you a little angle and a pain in the arse. Stick off the darn thing. All right. Slide this in there. Can I let go of this? Let go of those damn things. Okay, slide those in there. Those are the fronts. need something to set these into to set them up. What am I going to use? What am I going to use? Something else around here. Seem to be pretty good on the rear. in there I thought. Look at 
got me somewhere. All right. I suppose. It's 50 weight foot away. Don't need that over here. Huh, I got to have something I can start things on. We'll do it the hard way. A couple shock holders here. And we'll slide these in there so it sets a little bit better. And that is how you manufacture a quick shock holder. Okay. And we'll go with 80 weight in the room. Now I'm going to put 90 in. I'll put 90 in the rears. Go with the orange and then let them set. So I haven't used much of this, if any at all. I think I used a little bit on one set on the crawler. slower and not create a billion little bubbles the faster you move it the faster the bubbles push out and the smaller they become if you do it slow enough you won't create very many bubbles that have to then work out more in there set her down let her set Moving that shaft a little bit so the bubbles can slide out the side of the shaft. Well, this has just got a couple slots in the sides of the pistons that allow the fluid to flow through. A couple more drops. Let them sit for a, a while. Okay. A little more in these. 70. No, 70 in the front, 80 in the rear is what I'm going with here. It's probably going to be enough to push a little bit out. 
So I'm going to let those set for a few minutes. Let me take a quick second and go wash my hands. Get this crap off. Probably should be wearing rubber gloves using this stuff. This bright ass thing on for now. Hey, no more holy roses. All right, I'm gonna set this aside, and those are gonna just sit there and bubble out. It takes, like, say, you know, I try to let them set half hour minimum, you know, usually 45 minutes to an hour, usually at the minimum. Unless I don't have that time. If I ain't got that time, then you just got to knock the bubbles out and keep tapping as much as you can to get those bubbles out of there as much as you can. And then you'll turn around and kind of be okay. I guess I could use more coffee. We are at 48 minutes. No, obviously we're just concentrating on doing your shocks and you're not just you know running your mouth place in time like i am you usually have these done half hour uh, besides the wait time to let the bubbles come out so back in a sec That set for a few. Let's just get that up on top here. for the after dinner mint. So yeah, let your shocks uh, bubble out. You just got to let them sit there 
every once in a while, you know, give them a tap to help coax any possible air bubbles underneath the pistons back out. Every once in a while, I'll take them and I'll just push the shock shafts up a little bit. Here, I'll show you. Just push them up a little bit, give them a spin, pull them back down, do that a couple of times to help make sure I got any air bubbles underneath the pistons worked out. And again, let them set there and they'll do what they do. So it's always good if you can and if you can afford to, because shocks can be expensive in these things. You know, $60 a pair, $80 a pair, $40 a pair in some cases. Um, for your GTR Traxxas shocks, I think they're $39. Ninety-nine a pair. But yeah, from there you just pretty much kind of let them set, air out, um, top off your fluids once all your bubbles are out. You know these shocks got diaphragms, so it makes it a little bit easier um, to get them all out and blood out and set up not a lot easier but a little bit <coughs> and then uh from there it's pretty pretty straightforward you know shove your shock shaft halfway into your body put your caps on and once your cap's down and snug and you know you're tight push your shock body shaft into the body and make sure it goes all the way into the body without you know um, hydro locking. You get too much oil in there, your shaft won't go all the way in. It'll just stop at a certain point and you know, won't move anymore. It'll bounce a little bit. So you got too much oil and you got to take a little oil out. One easy way of doing that is just loosen your bottom caps. Um, your bottom cap, push your shock shaft in and it will push some of the oil, the fluid past the O-rings. So you got it, you know, most of the way in and then tighten up if you're too full. Getting the right amount of shock oil so your shocks are one have no air in them so they're not you know flopping around and popping through the air and jumping around a lot um is important and getting your shock consistency the same so you got pretty much the same amount of oil in each shock so they act the same as they compress and uncompress with the spring so they're finicky things once you got them set up once you've done them a half a dozen times you get a good idea how to do it you know how much oil to leave in at the top to put the caps on and not make a big mess or put too much in or have way too little out. Get too little in, you move the shock shaft up, you suck in a bunch of air, pull the piston down and suck air underneath it. Now you got to re-bleed the thing because you just strung bubbles throughout the whole fluid body. So Shocks are a finicky part of any RC. Um, Unless it's a really cheapy or really oily where it's just a spring and a body and there is no dampening or, you know, anything else. So they're one of the more finicky parts, kind of like gearing and not burning up your EAC. Kind of a real finicky thing to deal with sometimes. <clears throat> but you get that part down, then it's pretty simple from there on out, so. But yeah, pretty much here you are in your hurry up and wait moment. Because there really is no better, you know, way to bleed your bubbles out of your setups unless you've got a pressure system. Nobody got the one of those, you know, a thousand dollar pressure system to bleed, you know, twenty dollar shots, so <coughs> <coughs> <clears throat> up here in Michigan it's pretty cold though it looks like we're finally looking at a week of 60 um, it was 60 a couple of days ago on Wednesday I think maybe Tuesday Wednesday it was 60 and then Thursday and today were barely in the 40s uh, barely. I know it was only like 38 yesterday. So it really wasn't even in the 40s. Pretty chilly. 
Left the head frostbite in your hands a few times. They don't like moving when they get cold. When I get outside, my hands will go white. I mean, a lot of my fingers, the blood will just fall right out after having frostbite a few times. They don't take cold very well. When she's 50 degrees or below, my outside time's pretty limited. <coughs> 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 Too many years of smoking cigarettes. Yes, yeah, cigarettes. Because I quit smoking cigarettes for a couple years, um, four or five years ago. I quit for almost a year and a half, two years. Man, I was feeling good. And I started smoking again. Started driving around the state, stuck in traffic, dealing with the idiots. I'm right back to pack a day. So you can't quit. It's dealing with the stress so you don't have to let's see quick look around the fake book pretty much nothing of course it's what 12 almost one o'clock in the morning now so <coughs> <coughs> and then with my work, I work uh, remodeling. Well, I was working remodeling until last March. Um, pretty much exclusively was working doing assisted living and memory care facilities. And after all the shenanigans with the um, Rona beer virus last year, um, our, my work's been pretty much shut down, quarantined out for almost a year. Well, a little bit better year. They actually shut the place I was in for actually closed down a week before this governor shut the state down. And I've been out of work mostly in the last year from the governor, um, you know, governor's position. So, as so many others are. But anyways, I got sick last year, end of January, and I'm pretty sure it was this road of beer virus crap. I'm working in assisted living memory care facilities. This is before they started ramming people in there, thanks to the governor. And, you know, a bunch of other people dying because a bunch of sick, contagious people were shoved into an area with a bunch of sick people who were already on limited means as far as health goes. So anyways, I'm pretty sure that has a lot. Because ever since last year, it was the end of January, beginning of February, just for a couple of days, knocked me down in the lobby. Oh, you didn't get this stuff done. I don't get sick unless there's something really, really new in the area usually. And if I have any version of it, my body is pretty good and, you know, got antibodies against it. Whatever it was last, you know, early spring and the end of January, beginning of February, it put my ass down for a couple of days. I mean, my whole body hurt for 24 to 36 hours. Um, and since that point, I've had more fluid in my chest. Um, as a smoker who has been smoking the vast majority of my life, cigarette smoker and cannabis smoker, um, but I started smoking cigarettes when I was 12 daily. Of course, I started smoking cannabis before I was 12, but when I quit smoking cigarettes, I didn't quit smoking the cannabis, and all my coughing issues were gone. After a few months of getting that tobacco crap out of my lungs so i'm really trying to focus on wanting to quit smoking cigarettes again it's hard especially when you're stressed sometimes i'm hoping doing this stuff helps and it does because it keeps my mind going it keeps my brain going it keeps my hands going so i'm not grabbing a cigarette every couple minutes um of course when i'm outside running i am but it was like when i was playing music I'd light it, take about four drags off a cigarette, and the rest of it would just burn away because I'm sitting there doing other things with my hands and not really smoking cigarettes. More of a 
pacifier, if you will, or an appetite suppressant. <coughs> so, anyways, yeah, um, you know, this stuff's it's out there. It's nasty. It'll, it'll make you feel like crap. But overall, it's not like they say it is, unless you're already immunocompromised, like many people in nursing homes and assisted living homes and memory care facilities are. Part of the reason they're in there is not just cognitive decline, it's health decline. They need 24-hour nursing, but not so much that they need to be in the hospital. One of the places I remodeled a couple of years ago, same bit line, you know, same company. They got multiple places around the state. Um, it was an assisted living facility, and they had a memory care facility too, but it was living. So, I mean, all these places are living, obviously, but like husbands and wives would rent or buy an apartment out of this place, and then the nurses would come in and do whatever they had to do for the husband or wife, whoever needed the help. Um, so it was kind of cool because it wasn't like, the people were there alone. Nobody hardly ever coming to visit them. Because that does happen a lot you know, in elderly assisted living places. Of course, a lot of these people, a lot of their families have passed on already. Um, so they don't have many people to come visit them anymore. So it's great because you get to talk and learn so much. You know, even from people who are you know, in the memory care facilities or having issues with dementia and Alzheimer's. It can be kind of funny. It can be kind of... Um, Disappointing, depressing once in a while because you, know, you see somebody in bad shape, and nobody likes to see somebody in a, a rough state of mind or health. So it, it, there's that to it. But it, these people are usually they're they're pretty fun. Um, just to be around and talk and have conversations can be pretty enlightening. But yes, when it comes to this Rona, the old Corona beer virus. Um, it's real. It's not a fake thing, but it is called the coronavirus. It is a coronavirus, and the coronavirus is a long understood virus since at least 50 years ago. So, with that said, unless you're like overweight, obese, and have another pretty significant ailment, it might be a pain in the ass. Like me, I'm still kind of dealing with some of the after effects here almost a year later. Um, but it's not deadly or dangerous. I think what's more deadly or dangerous are the narrative surrounding this thing. Because this video will probably get, you know, blocked. I ain't monetized. I don't even have enough people to monetize this thing, enough subscribers or enough watch hours or anything. So I'm not getting anything off this regardless. They're making their money because I guarantee you somebody's putting, you know, commercialization and ads on this video when it is watched. And some YouTube's getting that money for that advertisement. I ain't getting a penny of it. Um, but they'll probably demonetize it, which is great. That's fine. Take your own, you know, right to make money away on my stuff, which I don't get anything off of that. That's apropos, in my opinion. Um, but with that said, uh, they may even just shut this one down because I, I said the dirty, evil words, coronavirus. Probably going to get it at least a notification on there. The coronavirus is real and it's killing people and be afraid. The government's going to save you. No, won't happen. Just like the cops. You know, I've got a lot of friends who are cops or some friends who are cops. Got some family who used to be cops. Um, some that want to be cops, at any point, every time you need a cop, they're only a phone call and a couple minutes away. When you meet them now, they'll show up later. So, you know, you got to protect yourself. Police are there to clean up the mess and do the paperwork, pretty much. Very seldom do police actually ever get into a situation where they can prevent something from happening. 98% of the time, they're coming in after the fact. It's already happened. That's why they're called. So anyways, we'll see what we can do here. Take a look and see if we've got many bubbles. I have to put some eyes on so I can see. They should be getting pretty close to, to finishing up. 
not really thick oil. Looks pretty clear. So sometimes half hour is all you need depending on your oil. Sometimes half hour is all you need depending on the thickness of the oil. Those are pretty good. The fronts look fine. Still one or two little in the back there. Not too bad. Yeah, they're pretty good. They can get capped up now. So, <laughs> usually it doesn't take too long. Half hour is usually pretty good. Sometimes it's a little colder. You know, it will take that oil bubbles a little longer to move through that fluid. The nice thing about silicone is the temperatures really don't affect the viscosity until they're at the extremes. So. 50 weights, almost always fluid, you know, in, in the same viscosity at 20 degrees out as it is at 100 degrees out. Pretty much going to operate the same. So that's the nice thing about, you know, silicone oil is it doesn't, don't want to say break down, but it doesn't lose viscosity or change the viscosity as it heats up or cools down to a, the windows of, you know, the high and the low point. Okay. So, I'm pretty good there. I usually try to, once it's all done being bled, I'll take and you know, make sure we're good. Probably got a little bit too much in there. So grab one more good towel here. Actually, there's a Kleenex for this. So, I'm going to take a little bit out. Not quite until you're about an eighth of an inch below the uh, the top part of the shaft because you got your diaphragm that will stick in there about that far. Displace a little bit of the fluid. Try to keep the cat hair out of it. Ashes, all those fun things. Now, as you see, I'll probably you know, see that shaft starting to push out. Push it all the way in and it pushes out. Probably still got a little too much fluid in there. You don't want it to push all the way back out without a spring. Kind of want it to go in and stop. So what we can do here is just a couple times go like this. Just to pull a little bit of that fluid out. Try to get some more out of there just to touch. A couple drops at a time. Throw a shaft back in. It's not all the way out. There we go. That should be pretty decent. Goes in smooth. It does push out, but now you're pushing up the diaphragm. The nice thing is when you feel it, it's smooth. You don't feel any kind of fluttering or anything. Because if you do, you've got an air bubble or air bubbles. And that will screw up the way your shock um, reacts, especially at 50, 60 miles an hour. So it's important to get those right. Okay. Let's go ahead and... Do this one. Take another look just to make sure. Take just a little bit out of the top of that. Got a little too much in this one.
see. There you go. See, that's hydro locking. So I can't, you know, kind of hard to see, but see how it's kind of stopping right there. Too much oil. Too much fluid yet. That you want that shaft to go all the way in and have a little push out, but not spring back force. It should just kind of lightly, gently push back out. Take a drop. So there we go. So now it goes all the way in. It goes all the way in a little farther than the thing pushes back out, but it's smooth. Here, I'm gonna rip my darn nail. Okay. Tightening up the cap as best I can. back on Okay. A lot of light here on this thing. Right. Again, nice and smooth. Okay, they look like they're pretty good. They feel the same or pretty close. They actually have a, a shock tool that you can load your shocks into and, and squeeze on it, and it gives you, you know, pressure ratings on each shock so you can match them so you can go in there and adjust your oil levels to get that finicky um i ain't gonna get that finicky if i had bleeder caps i might it's a lot easier than taking the cap off every time you need to add or throw a little bit out bleeder caps kind of loosen that bleeder screw and just push them up push some of that oil out if you got too much so it's easy to just put in a little extra get everything filled out make sure all your air is out losing your bleeder cap you know set them up and losing your bleeder cap after a half hour setting and just push them straight up all the way in push a little bit of oil out let the oil come out um set i'll make sure hold the piston all the way in and then set your bleeder screw again and they're the same every time because you're pushing all the excess oil out that you don't need in there. Okay, I think that'll get us through the fronts. Now they're a little shorter. This should be good. 
move on to the rear. I know I don't have any oil in there. Yeah, I'm going to turn it on just to make sure. Extra bubbles, because they both look good a minute ago. And there's still a couple in there. See how this looks. Suck just a little bit out of this one. It's about a little too much. A drop or so back in. Try to go with a to get it so it's just a little less than one eighth of an inch underneath the inside lip because your diaphragms are pretty. You know, they go in a little bit better than eighth of an inch of the body. That down, start my cap. I don't want to push them in too much. Actually, I probably better double check that because I felt it going too far and I sucked a little air. Yep, and a couple of bullets now. More drops in there. Nice thing is they're right on top. Let's shake them out real quick. One thing you can do to help facilitate a little quicker, popping of the bubbles, is just slip your knife in there and run right by them. You kind of hit them and you just want to make a little cutting thing. You don't want to stir or whip. You just kind of want to back and forth in there and in doing so you'll kind of disrupt those bubbles and push them up a little bit what you don't want to stir and whip you want to kind of just go right back and forth and there's still a couple in there Let that one set a minute now. Let's bring this one back out. She's got plenty in there. Looks pretty good. I know there's too much in there, but I'm going to let her goose out and make a mess. That's all right. I guess that ain't too bad. Go ahead and tighten her down. It does kind of pack it out, but right at the thread line, so. I think she'll be okay. Ooh. I didn't do that on those, though. That is the other thing I did want to do. I forgot that on the front. 
means that those ain't going to work on this. Where's my other chunk of hose? What did I do with that floppy thing? So I need a little bit of limiter outside. So I'm going to cut myself a couple quarter inch pieces to go on the outside. Put these on an off floor. I'll have to pop the cats off those. The shock's going all the way in either. I want to kind of limit how far they travel inside the body. Too much oil in there, so it's probably going to need a little taken out. And just a smidge. The nice thing is that's probably going to be enough right on the cap. Same as the other one. Feels good. Okay. Outside limiter. Okay. 
Spring cap. Those ones off real quick. So that seems pretty good. Let's pop these off real quick. Put our limiters down the shafts because I did forget them. Try to keep everything even, and that's where um, Eric RC Lowrider Madness was talking about buying the Drag Race Concepts shot um, limiter. I've got a 3D printer. I could probably I gotta learn how to use the design CAD better. So as soon as I get that figured, I can just print out some stuff or find the SDL files and do them that haven't looked too hard. But that would make it a little easier for sure. But yeah, it's nice to have nice, you know, hard limiters, but these fuel line work great and they do offer a little bit of a cushion. So you're not like hard bottoming or hard extending out. It just gives it a little bump. So it does kind of lessen the quote unquote recoil, if you will. Okay. Now, it's not going to go in as far, obviously. About a half inch travel, it's really all you need. For drag racing, there's no bumps. There's no jumps. Hopefully you're not, you know, off the curbs and they shouldn't be, shouldn't be. I mean, jump off the curbs for shit to go. Sure, I get it. I'll probably do that myself a little bit. But. Okay. One more.
think we are finally there with these. I actually feel a little bit better. Feel actually pretty good. Room here. Yeah. It's still good. Okay, let's put our bottles up. We are ninety. Seventy here, back with Blanc for now. Puppies back on. Now you can see free floating where everything's kind of sitting. The arms and back are really you know, droop there. I love this transmission, Josh. Um, give me a second here and I'll show you why I love this transmission. I got three of them now two mid motors and a rear motor after getting the first two outer two cases and put them together and i had to get one for the the other rig third one the tarp or i'm sorry the redshift these things are bad let me throw these shocks on and i'll show you why you can kind of it, it's hard now with all the angle because it's everything's kind of binding up a little bit give me a minute let me drop this uh these rear shocks on here and then I think you'll understand why I'm kind of geeky about it. I went ahead, I will say right off the get-go, the third tranny I bought was their 90%. The first two were just the, uh, the first two were just the tranny cases. So I had no internals. The third one I bought was the 90%, which comes with, um their eco bearings and i don't the eco bearings they're steel bearing steel shield um steel bearing and they felt they weren't lubed really well they're a stock eco bearing um and they work pretty decent but I wasn't overly keen on how they felt, but that wasn't the big deal anyways. Um, I was planning on putting in ceramic um, bearings, and I ended up, I did. I put in Backyard RC ceramic bearings in two of them, and Fast Eddie ceramic bearings in one. And go to the center one right here for now. So I get this one. Least mounted, and I don't have the actual team associated slipper clutches. I don't have any yet. There, I ordered the Revolution RC um, dual pad slipper clutch system, and they're back ordered. So I'm, they came in a little bit last week at A Main, but they were still out of. They went back out of stock, I should say. They've 
back what came in was out before my back order got filled. So everything that they got in was already purchased and on the way to somebody else before I made my order. So I'm still waiting for slipper clutch, basically. But I got the Revolution RC um, slipper clutch systems. <clears throat> but most everybody you know who's running the stock team associated are very satisfied with its performance, regardless of that's on a Traxxas system. Um, Traxxas based tranny rig or these uh, drag race concepts. Obviously, drag race concepts went over um, to a team associated slipper setup and you know for the Traxxas systems, Traxxas top shaft, but cut for the team associated slippers, obviously, as you're probably already aware, but for people who may not be. But yeah, bear with me a few more seconds, Josh, and get these shots snugged up in the back. And I've got a couple of videos, if you're interested, um, of the Drag Race Concept Trannies build. So you can check those out too. I got one of them of a build, um, the the first mid motor build I did. I think it was. It might have been the rear. Can't quite remember. Um, I think it was a mid motor. Yeah, I built the rear motor version. And then built the mid motor and put the mid motor, you know, build on YouTube here, built it on YouTube Live. So you can check that out. Um, and that video should be a good selling point um, just because of the way the thing acts. So, why am I so tickled with it? Check my arms. Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. So, Pull these level here a little bit. Not quite the same in the rig, out of the rig, um, than just free floating because you got everything hooked up to it. Kind of a, a trick. I'm trying to get a, a better spot here to take some tension off and level my arms. But yeah, it doesn't seem like much. And on that one I still got to do the thing this has got full ceramics all the way around but there is I mean I'm literally given like no no real push I mean this thing is there's no resistance on it if you go look I got a uh, one of the tran the tranny builds after I got the first mid motor done it's about a four minute and ten second 10 20 second video and about a minute into it i just said this is why i'm loving this drag race concept training or something like that um that first one is built i got the backyard our seats um ceramic bearings in it um the eco bearings that come in the full build tra chassis are okay but i would recommend putting in better quality even steel bearings um the eco line they're pretty eco in my opinion which is kind of surprising um you would think that as nice as this training case is that they would just go with a quite slightly better quality bearing it's not that they're crap they just they're steel and they didn't feel the greatest with the ceramics in here it was you know what is it, it takes six bearings and i don't know i'm assuming one on the shaft so seven um i think you can get ceramic bearing six of them or you know four or five bucks a piece so 24 35 bucks somewhere in there um maybe 45 50 if you're getting avids but dude those make the difference you go watch that little four minute video and when i get it built and i just got it set in my hand i spin it and it spins for a minute 50 seconds a minute and 20 seconds i mean i think i just get a good spin out of my fingers and it just goes and goes and goes. Um, it, it was, I was impressed. Um, I was in, concerned about the RPM plastic. It's a softer plastic. When it gets warm, holding bearings, it's going to get warm. Got a little flex, a little slip. 
I was concerned about that. I had a pro line tranny. Um, that's a better quality plastic. I wasn't so concerned about that, but it's got the nub on it. So you got to do a little mounting tweak if you're running it mid motor. Got to deal with squat. Um, after seeing the drag race concepts tranny come out, I was like, yeah, baby, that's for me. They realigned the top shaft a little bit. There's one hiccup I see that may or may not be a problem yet. I don't know. Is if you look here at the top of the tranny, right here on this spot, right here, right there, that motor is pretty much up against it. Okay, so it's not going to get too much more adjustment. So I'm hoping, you know, that depending on spur and pinion, that that will allow some smaller pinions um, to get close enough to actually engage well. You may not be able to gauge a really small 14, 13, 15 tooth pinion. You may need to start out in 18, 19 just to get the mesh there. But I don't know because I don't have either. Um, I don't have the, I got the slipper um, clutches. Or this, I'm sorry, the spur gears, but I don't have the slipper systems. But yeah, I was really impressed. I, I think this tranny, now I haven't ran them yet. I haven't ran anything yet because I've just been starting this no prep stuff last fall. And we got, you know, winter here in Michigan. So I only got a few passes on my original used bought unit I bought from a, a local guy. But I've been RCing for 25 plus 30 years. Um, actually longer than I started RCing when I was a kid in the 70s. Of course, car RCs weren't very popular back then. I had two uncles that were RC flyers, one from each side of the family. And they were both flyers and RCs, so I kind of helped with them a little bit. Played with, you know, I knew a couple kids who had um, little nitro-type gas surface RC, car RCs back in the 70s and early 80s. Um, it was the late 70s when I started getting into it. Um, so, you know, and then by the mid 80s, I was out of RC for the time being and into music and chasing girls. Um, graduated high school in 84. So that's where that went. Got back into it oh, a little bit in the late mid 90s. And then again in the you know mid 2000s. And we got out around 2012. And I'm kind of back into it. Yeah, that that video, man, of you know the way that thing just spins and spins, it 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 was so smooth. Um, ceramic bearings, I believe, played a big part of that with stock, say, Traxxas bearings or just a stock with a five by eleven by four bearing. Um, it's going to spin nice and smooth, but you won't you'll have more resistance because of those bearings by going to the hybrids. I didn't use full ceramics, obviously. They're 25, 45 bucks a bearing. <laughs> 25, 245, depending on maker cost for an entire ceramic. So no, I didn't go that route. I used the hybrid steel cage ceramic balls more than plenty for what we're using in these things. They were beautiful, man. Those things. I got all my three of my rigs set up with ceramics. Um, two of them with the backyards and the tarp here has pretty much fast steady um ceramic bearings. So that is one thing I think, yeah, this one has the fast steady ceramics in it. I think I'll take a look. Oh no, I got backyard RCs in this one. Thought I had fast steadies, but they are backyard RC bearings in there. And tell because fast yard or backyard RCs they have the orange shield and fast eddies still have a blue rubber shield. It depends, to her, Josh. Um, if you've got all the guts of a tranny case that you want to use, unless you want to keep a backup tranny, there's no reason to buy the 90% unit. Um, my first two were the cases, and I just transferred everything over. Um, of course, I had a hot diff um, or hot racing diff, so the diff was already better, and I already had the hot racing aluminum idler gears. <clears throat> so for me, when I first bought the two trays, I got just the cases and the top shaft. So it was seventy-five bucks for you know one case and one top shaft, and I bought you know one of the rear motors, one of the mid motors, and then two top shafts. 
and then uh, filled those with backyard RCs. I think in the Fast Eddies, I might have actually pulled those out because I didn't label them. I usually put a black C on the shield, so I know it's a ceramic, and I forgot to do that. So I think the Fast Eddies that were in my original um, tranny were put into... No, they went into another thing because I had the Proline in this, which I had fast steady bearings in, but Proline. But anyways, ceramic bearings. It's a little bit pricier. Oh, excuse me. I got the hiccups. The ceramic bearings are a little bit pricier on the stockers. Um, Justin at Backyard has a entire kit, which includes, I believe, ceramic bell crank bearings. It's like 48 bucks, but for $35, you can get what he calls his driveline kit. It's 14 bearings, so it's the bearings for your wheels and the bearings for your tranny, not counting the spur gear. Um, you need 15 bearings because the stock system has a spur a bearing on the spur gear, so there's seven bearings on the tranny with the slipper clutch system on the stock tracks this bearing. Um, I'm thinking, I don't, I'm thinking that. VXL and the other one, they don't use a bearing on the spur system on the team associated. So if you got all the guts, you know, no use buying the other unit. I would buy just the cases and the top shaft, unless you want to run the Traxxas top shaft and the Traxxas slippers, whatever, and then go that route. Um, I don't, you know, the Traxxas, you know, slippers aren't bad, but, you know, everybody's switching over for a reason. Yeah, I've used Fast Eddies in a lot of my um, RC stuff, at least for the last 12, 15 years or so, since about 2006, give or take a little bit. I started running Fast Eddies. Um, I, you know, with the HVI Baja, was really my first delve, looking for a higher quality bearing. Um, and then I built a Hooters Baja, a Hooters theme. Um, and that, I used ceramic bearings and the whole thing, and they were fast steadies, and yeah, they were great. Um, I get them right directly from Justin at Backyard, and you can catch him right on Facebook, um, Backyard, or The Backyard um, RC, and it's Justin Rodebush, I believe is his last name, or Roundabush, something like that. Um, you can order them directly from him. I think he's out of stock at the moment but he has them coming because i have a set ordered of you know a full set or a 10 pack i should say ordered of uh bearings dropped a screw somewhere put it somewhere misplaced it run in my mouth not my mind there it is um, but yeah, you can get a hold of Justin right through Facebook. If you're not on Facebook, now where they go? And you need his contact info. Just go ahead and post that in there, and I'll find it on Facebook and get you his email address so you can email him. I know a lot of people don't like Facebook. I'm not a big fan. But I'll keep using it. But I'm not going to limit what they say. I'll just take the bands. I've been getting a lot of bands. That's why I've got three Facebook accounts. Because one of them's always in the position of being in a 30 day. Except right now, actually, all three of them. Are actually open. Yeah, he's got a nice ABEX 7 um, orange shield bearing that he sells. And the prices are you know, like say, pretty good. The Fast Eddy pack ceramic bearings for a complete bandit build, I think, are 63 by the time you get done with the tranny. Um, it was sixty-three dollars for the entire set. Um, I probably screwed the pooch on that. 
Gotta set the bottoms first. But yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I, I don't believe you there. Facebook can be a pain in the ass. I look at it just as I look at all social media, almost including you know YouTube here. Um, for me, this stuff I treat it like the cork board between the in and out door at Walmart or your local grocery store where everybody's just posting, you know, need a babysitter, got this for sale. You know, want to clean your gutters? It's the corkboard poster. And it's kind of funny because, you know, so many people on Facebook take it so literally. And I get it. You know, you got, you know, people, their friends, acquaintances, business associates, family, what have you. Um, but. Yeah, people post stuff on Facebook and they just go kind of ape shit. <laughs> I mean, this last five years, I mean, let's face it. Because of the last 55, 65, 75 years of the don't talk about religion and politics because, you know, it leads to unsavory conversation and arguments. Well, not talking about it has led to unsavory conversations and arguments. Just look at Facebook. This last four years on Facebook, even here on YouTube, the, the craziness, the censorship. Can't talk about this. If I, if I talked about uh, Eric Sierra Mella, whoops, I'll probably get this video banned now. Um, if I talk anything more about that, I'll just say it, leave it at that. I said the name. If you're not sure who or whoops, not sure who or why, just go look up that name. It's just insane. I mean, George Orwell wrote 1984. Now, a lot of people say, well, it wasn't supposed to be a narrative. Um, yeah, it was. 1984 was an or, or narrative. It wasn't just a futuristic book. It was a game plan. Because uh, George Orwell's real name, I can't quite remember off the top of, my, top of my head, but his brother was part of, back in the day, you know, what we call today the Bilderbergs group or, you know, um, Davos group or the New World Order proponents, whatever it is. A lot of people don't know his brother or uncle or something like that was part of that group. So he wasn't writing just a crazy book about the future. <laughs> he was writing down the game plan of what they wanted to do in the future. And here we are in the future. So, yeah, it's uh, kind of some nutty stuff for sure. This thing was kind of a pain getting it in here. The first time. Come on, dog, get in there, right? But yeah, it's just it's just nuts, man. People are losing their ever loving bloody minds. Just over the most stupid, stupid stuff. But yeah, just look at the last four years. If you didn't support Hillary or Bernie, <laughs> or then this last thing, you know, you know, according to me, if you didn't support Joe, you're a you know, dirty bigot. It's gotten crazy in my lifetime. Uh, like I say, I'll be 55 this year. I was born in 1966. I'm the youngest of five, so I grew up basically with hippies, um, as my brothers and sisters, not my mom and dad. They're older. But my brothers and sisters were pretty much the hippie generation, except for my oldest sister. She would, you know, be the what most people today would consider to be a typical boomer. God, this is kind of a pain in the butt. Sometimes this is a turd. I'm 
try to smooth this out a little, make that easier to get in and out. So yeah, I don't mind talking politics and religion. I think we need to talk more about that. <laughs> Whether you believe in politics or religion or not, I think we need to discuss it more because if we don't, we're just going to get deeper and deeper on this great divide that we're on. You know, maybe the Hopi prophecies are right about the future where, you know, humanity is going to split into two paths. Those that are going to wander off into oblivion and those that are going to, you know, continue on with life. Because there's definitely some funky shit going down in the city. Yeah, no, I'm not child friendly usually either. Now my you know, self rolled cigarettes over here, not full of cigarette tobacco, but full of that nasty legal devil's weed. Try and smooth this off a little bit. Make this thing get in there a little bit, out, a little out, me in and out a little better. But yeah, I'm really digging these regular trans, uh, trannies. I think they're going to be a hell of a good thing to have in place. Now I'm going to need to. Peel that down a little bit more, I think, to get it in place. Alright, smaller one here. Here, first line to we'll see what we get. Yeah, that work. So I got some I think there's sixteen millimeter screws to go in here and go all the way through. And then, of course, they hit the bumper here. They're not far enough in. So I got to put the bottoms on first on the front. So I forgot about that. But, yeah, one thing I can say here on this thing with this tranny, Josh, if I were to, I got no gears on it right now. So once I've got the tires on it, you know, basically free roll. Um, set the front tires so they're straight and just push it. You know, and you do that with pretty much most RCs. And it's going to roll four, five, six feet, kind of stop. Um, if you, especially like, a, you know, I'm talking a hard surface, like a hardwood floor. You know, you might get eight feet, ten feet stops. I guarantee you, if I took this thing, and was outside on a nice smooth concrete spot and I just gave it a, a general push without really trying to shove it um, I bet you she'd roll 15 25 35 feet I mean this thing just this tranny is just so smooth there's so little resistance I was really impressed okay I think we got that one. Let me go ahead and tighten those up the rest of the way. I guess I got it. Oh, I got a different length threads here, bolts. Let me fix that. I got two different bolts completely, besides different lengths.
<laughs> yeah, that party's kind of one-sided all of a sudden. They bought the Kool-Aid hook, line, and sinker. Yeah, I wish I wish I could set up an affiliate program. Maybe I should get a hold of the guys at Drag Race Concepts and set up an affiliate program with them. I'm impressed with this training. I mean, I've been impressed with some pretty good stuff. This is a damn nice piece. They did a good job with the design and the manufacturing. Um, I am very pleased with it and its you know potential. It's going to be a hell of a you know the, the resistance on it is like nil so you really want to make it good drop in some ceramic bearings and uh let her fly my friend let me see i should have one look the shorter one i don't think that's the right one no but yeah thanks for hanging out for a few minutes have a good night Josh, uh, we'll talk to you later, and maybe someday we'll be able to hook up and race. years of the 60s of all those 60 parents that had kids and grew up to be helicopter parents that had the Millennials <laughs> yeah, yeah Kool-Aid they drank the Kool-Aid they were probably doing pretty good I think most of them got too much acid far too much LSD done by their parents in the 60s because these people are flipping nuts all right. Not well, that one's looks about like the right one would make. Oh, that one's not quite long enough yet either. A little longer than this one. Even a matching bowl. It's the same manufacturer, it looks like. There we go. Seems anal, I know, but when you're doing measure weights and side to side balancing, longer bolts on one side or the other ain't much, but it's added weight on one side. Yeah, that's better. I'll go through there and get into the nylon well. Yeah, Jim Jones might have took care of a bunch of the the Jonesite Kool-Aid drinkers, but his ideology lived on in the CIA. Did I say that aloud? Oh no. Whoops. Sorry, CIA, you traitors. <gasps> Did I say that a lot too? God, I, I have this darn, darn, you know, speech impediment, kind of like old Joe. Guess you can call it a form of Tourette's. Fuck you, CIA. Whoops. Did I say that a lot? Oh, God. It's so bad. 
All right, that's pretty much it. Two hours to do shots. Um, but yeah, this is, you know, the end result. You see, remember how far they were flopping? You go back in the video, they were dropped way down. And now I've only got, you know, Jesus, maybe five eighths of an inch of actual travel on the shock shaft. Um, they're set almost level. And then, of course, when the car is set, I may actually end up going to a slightly lighter spring. I may even go to a heavier oil. <laughs> I know some people are running 1,000, 2,000 weight diff oil in the shocks on the rear. It's not bad, though. I don't, it may be too light. We'll see. Um, but So, yeah. So, there's our, our travel now. You can just kind of see they're almost level once they set up. Of course, to get a little bit more in the on dry shafts a level because when you're running down and your dry shafts are spinning up, the whole centrifugal force and inertia wants to level these things out. And then in front, as you can see, it actually kicked up a little bit now. And again, about half inch of travel. Give or take a little bit. There we go. Get that bottomed out. So it will still, I think, bottom out on the front. Or get really close. Yeah, it will bottom out. Um, but I may grab a couple little C clips shock spacers just to slip a couple clips on there. Um, take up a little space. Let me go ahead and get these rear wheels on and get it wrapped off and done for the night. But yeah, if you're still here, Josh, uh, yeah, definitely. I. Re reason I bought three or a third one, and I ended up having to buy the 90% because the stock cases were out of stock, or just the cases themselves. DRC was out of stock. Um, nobody else I found was selling just the cases until I happened upon the 90% case at A Main, and they got some of the rears and some of the mids. And when I seen that, I threw one in my cart. And the next day, they were saying limited quantities available. So I pushed the buy button so I wouldn't have to wait any longer. I was already waiting a week. Um, I got the other ones and didn't even have, have them for a day and had the first one built and was ready to buy the second one. So All all right and if anybody's wondering what rig this is, this is the tarp rc um this particular chassis is the omb 6001 stage three kit stage one is just the chassis stage two is the front and rear shock tower and rear shock tower mounts stage three is the wheelie bar um everything else you got to throw on all the arms everything else tranny all that stuff this is a tarp kit um, fitted up with Traxxas bell crank and Traxxas carriers, front and rear, RPM arms, RPM uh, blocks. I may go back to stock Traxxas arms because they are a little bit firmer. Um, then we have, of course, the Drag Race Concept Strani with Backyard RC ceramic bearings in it. Uh, Fast Eddy ceramic bearings in the wheels on this front and rear. And that's one of the reasons why right there. I mean, that other, you know, stock bearings aren't going to spin like that. Um, and that's one of the big differences with ceramics over stock bearings. Um, so back to this. Uh, Lunsford titanium turnbuckles, except for these are stock. And I'm going to buy a couple pieces of titanium for those. Lunsford titanium front axles. MIP rear axles, um, Hoosiers front and back tires on Proline rims, Pomona's up front, F11's in the rear, Reese 299 LP um, string servo, Tekken RX 8 Gen 3 with the newest version of the drag race firmware ready to go onto the SE. I've got it on the computer. I just got to update the firmware. 
Trinity Dragmaster whole shot 3.5 turn. Um, is that the drag race? Yeah, drag race concepts. Rear extended mount, drag race concepts, front bulkhead, drag race concepts. That's a zero degree bulkhead and front bumper and shock tower. No, I'm sorry. This is the tarp shock tower. I didn't get the zero degree shock tower. The tarp shock tower did fit on the um, DRC zero degree bulkhead. Mounts up just fine. Um, I'm going to change these places so I get these leveled out. I got to change a couple things here. Um, let's see what else is in this thing. Root dog bullets, four or five millimeter bullet adapters, and SSD and RC four wheel drive link ends. Some heavy duty Traxxas link ends. Chinese shocks. Low C oils, 500,000 diff fluid in this diff with the hot racing cases and the hot racing idler gear. Aluminum idler gear, not steel. Of course, it's got the drag race concepts, team associated uh, top shaft. Soft foam bumper, and this unit will be getting the backyard RC um, alpha body, which, if you're not familiar, it's the only body he makes right now, and it is like a 1973-1974 Chevrolet Vega. Um, that's a it's a sweet looking body. He did an ex excellent job. So much so, I'd be surprised if GM doesn't send a lawyer to talk to him about <laughs> some royalties because it looks really good. And no, I'm not suggesting they do. Screw you, GM. You don't even make a Vega anymore, so fuck off. Did I say that out loud? I don't know. Heavens me. So that's it. Just thought I'd, you know, jump on. I'm dealing with a little bit of insomnia, so I can't sleep anyways. I needed to get these shocks done. May as well do it on YouTube. So I think I'm going to call it right there. Thanks for hanging out. Hit that like, share, and subscribe button if you would. Um, Trying to grow the channel. Maybe I can get an apprentice or a uh, affiliate program going with somebody somewhere. Because you know, I buy this stuff myself. I don't get it given to me. And if it was given to me, I'm still going to give you it my review and not, oh, it's for free, so I got to talk well about it. I got a J Concepts tire balancer and. Save your money. Buy the Debro prop balancer because it's going to work way better in my opinion. So yeah, you guys have a good night. Thanks for hanging out. We'll talk to you later.